Welcome back to The Girl Take Note. I am Shawnee Sanders, and it's been about two months since I did an episode. And so I'm excited to get back on behind this microphone and give you guys this episode and really talk about something that I've really been struggling with. And that is, how do we stay motivated and resilient on our journey, right, as entrepreneurs? But before I get into this conversation, let's first define what does it mean to be resilient? And by definition, resilient just means to is being able to withstand or overcome difficult conditions. And difficult conditions is what really stood out for me because that's what I've been experiencing this past two months. Things have been happening in my life around my journey, around just things that I've been going through that has really stopped me from releasing episodes for the past two months. And we know that when things happen in our family, when things happen in our life, Certain things just take precedence over that. And so that's kind of what happened. Certain things took precedent over what was going on. So everything had to stop. But what I realized about resilience is that it's about bouncing back when things don't go as planned and trying to continue to push forward despite whatever challenges you may be facing. And that's the key piece is that being able to push forward despite the challenges. And we know as entrepreneurs, we face obstacles every day, right? We're dealing with setbacks to navigating the uncertainties of just running a business or trying to start a business or build a business. Staying motivated and resilient is really what is our key to our success. And it's not easy. It really isn't easy. And What I'm going through right now just kind of reminds me of this is just a tough time for me in this moment. And in this moment, I got to tell you, I I questioned my path and days when it seemed like giving up was just like the simplest thing to do. Like it was just easy to just do it. But what I'm learning through this is that resilient isn't just about surviving. It's about thriving. And using every challenge as a stepping stone to something greater, because there has to be something greater. It just has to be. And what I've been dealing with is that it's been so all consuming when things happen in your life and your family needs you more than anything. Everything becomes all consuming. And this has been all consuming for me. And so today I just want to share, I want to share some personal things that I've been going through. I want to share how I've been trying to build my resilience to stay motivated throughout my journey. And I want to use these episodes on Tuesdays to begin to share more personal things throughout my entrepreneur journey, because I feel like it's important. I feel like this is my opportunity to kind of just be able to have therapy almost and talk about what I'm going through, because a lot of times I don't share personal things I'm going through because, you know, just out of fear of people judging, right. Or just out of fear of like, I don't know. I don't know if it's fear or just feeling like I should be further than where I am. But there are tools that we can use to keep us motivated, inspired, and to keep us going no matter what comes our way. So whatever you're doing right now, I want you to grab yourself your favorite drink. I want you to settle in somewhere. And I want us to get started on building a mindset that not only withstands the storms, but grows stronger because of them. I wanted to take that deep breath because sometimes we just need to breathe through it all. And I have been dealing with things that have, I feel like kind of put me at a crossroad and because the business not growing the way that I hoped, I feel stuck at times. And I, I remember just sitting in the hospital, feeling overwhelmed and defeated, questioning everything right? My decisions, my abilities, my future, my options, my possibilities, my opportunities. But it was in that moment that I realized something very crucial and I needed to shift my mindset. Our mind is a powerful tool for us and that can really make or break us. And I know I needed to stop focusing on, I needed to, I needed to stop focusing on the obstacles and focus more on opportunities, other possibilities 
of opportunities. And that's when I discovered that the power of resilience, that's where it comes into. Because I'm not going to pretend and act like everything is perfect or ignore the challenges that I'm facing, right? It's about facing them head on and finding ways to kind of try to overcome them really is what that is. But what I feel like was so hard for me is like, how do I overcome something if I can't see my way out? If I feel like I'm in this dark place and I can't see my way out of it, how do I overcome it? How do I build that resilience? And so I talked to a friend the other day and she asked me, she said, hey, how are you doing? And a lot of times when someone asks me that question, I know you guys are probably like this too. You just give the normal political correct answer. Oh, I'm doing great. Although everything around you is falling apart, just falling the fuck apart. But this time I decided, you know what? I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be honest with people. So when she asked me that question, I said, oh, I'm just sitting over here watching my life fall apart. And she was just like, what? And she was like, no, 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 no. This doesn't even sound like you. This doesn't even sound like you. And she said, what I need you to do, Johnny, is I need you to pick yourself up. I need you to get up. And she kept saying that word, I need you to get up. I need you to get up. And not that I need to get up in the physical sense, she said. You need to get up spiritually, emotionally, and mentally. Because you sound like you've already given up. You sound like you're already defeated. And I told her, that's what I feel like. I feel like I'm defeated. She said, but you're not. So get up. And she just kept saying it. And I don't know, something inside of me said, you know what? She's right. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get started. She said, work a plan. Get a plan and work it. But as you know, things don't always go as planned. Because these past two months have not gone as planned as I thought it would be. With something happening in my family that needed my attention, with the financial part of the business not really coming in the way it should, with just the mental, the mindset of everything that I'm going through and everything that I'm facing, right? It was hard to get up. And so I needed the conversation because I needed to hear someone tell me to get up because I was at a place where I was like, I'm going to just sit right here and I'm going to watch it all fall apart. And that's not how it goes. That's not how life goes. That's not what we should do. We have to fight through it. We have to find the resilience. We have to find a way to be motivated. I had to find a way to reframe my mindset. Because when I encounter setbacks, I learned that I have to view them as opportunities for growth. Instead of me just seeing them as a failure or a dead end. You know, and I, I have to learn that these are opportunities for growth. These are opportunities to learn. And so I need to see it as a detour, right? A chance to learn, adapt, and come back stronger than ever before. And what I realized that is also is that it's really all about perspective. Because your mindset is the foundation of your life success. Not just our entrepreneur success, but our life success. And if we could change our thoughts, if we can truly change the way we think, which is probably one of the things that most people preach about. My brother is a mindset coach. He talks about it all the time. If you can change your thoughts, you can change your life. But how do you change your thoughts? I always think that when people say change your thoughts, think differently, think positive, it's such an easy thing to say, but it's such a hard thing to do. So I had to go back. I had to go do research and I had to say, how do I change my thought process? How do I get myself out of this rut that I'm in, this dark place that I'm in, right? This place where I couldn't even put out episodes because what I was dealing with my family was just all consuming. And you know what? And family comes first, but it was all consuming. But also I'm dealing with, there's no money coming in from the business at this moment and bills are due. Family have to be taken care of. The stress and the anxiety is so strong and it's so heavy that I'm falling into this depression. And so, you know, I took it back to just like the basics of just say, you know what, just set small achievable goals for yourself. Not big goals that can overwhelm me, right? Not saying, oh, I'm going to make $50,000 this month. That's a bit overwhelming. 
But to stay motivated, I need to break them down into small and manageable things and celebrate each small win. And I've talked about this before, guys. I've talked about celebrating your wins, but I need to celebrate my wins along the way. I need to stop looking at everything as a failure and look at the small things that are actually going right. Because this not only builds that momentum for us, but I feel like it keeps you focused and driven. And I remember celebrating even the tiniest victories, right? I mean, I just remember celebrating the fact that, oh, I got my podcast name. I did my artwork, you know, just those small milestones. I launched a website. I did my first episode. And each celebration, I felt like reminded me that I was making progress. And then I stopped celebrating. And so I'm going to get back to really just doing more of that. And another thing I realized is that when you're in a dark place, when you're in a place where you're, it's hard to push through, it's hard to get through. You have to surround yourself with positivity. You have to have a positive environment. You have to have positive people around you because it plays a huge role in your mindset. If you surround yourself with people who are just supporting your narrative at that moment, where you're like, it's not working out. Shit is not going to make it. I, I don't know what to do. I think it's time for me to give up. I think it's time for me to go get a job. And then that's exactly what's going to happen because that's your mindset. And then you now you don't find people to support that mindset to tell you, you know what, you're right. You should. This was never going to work out anyway. But if I surround myself with positive, supportive people who will lift me up and encourage me, and I can make a conscious effort to connect, right? I can make a conscious effort to connect with other entrepreneurs, to join a mastermind group, to seek out mentors, to really make a connection with people who understand the journey and can support you along the way and kind of guide you along your way. Because I feel like when you're able to surround yourself with people who can support you, it doesn't just provide um, only support, but they give you just really valuable insight and inspiration. And I love doing the podcast because when I talk to entrepreneurs on this show, it does inspire me because it inspired me on my journey. I understand their story of how they struggled, how they came from homelessness. And now they're at a place where they're just like achieving absolutely amazing things. And so I had to understand that I, I love doing my podcast episodes. And so even not doing those for the past two months put me in a weird space too. Because that was my motivation. I, that did keep me inspired. And so what I realized that I had to, I have to incorporate more self-practice because burnout is real. And it can really derail your motivation and resilience. So we, people say it all the time, make self-care a priority. No, we really need to learn how to make self-care a priority. And that is because of our mental health, our stress, everything. So whether it's exercise, meditation, reading, or just simply taking a break, we really have to find what rejuvenates us. And I feel, I feel like it's a, it's for me, it's just a mix of just being able to do, have my morning routine, being able to journal, being able to spend quality time with um, my loved ones, being able to spend time with God, being able to just, you know, take care of myself and put myself in a better, in a space where I'm better equipped to handle whatever challenges that may come my way. And I think that's so important when it comes to that. And also I, I want to, and I want all of us to do that is to embrace failures as learning opportunities. Because failure is not the opposite of success. And I've been reading about this. It's not the opposite of success. It's part of the journey. It's just a part of the journey. And we have to learn how to embrace it, learn from it, and move on. And I think that's hard because when we get those failures, it's hard to move past it. But I know some of my biggest lessons, my biggest lessons has come through some of my biggest failures and hardship that I'm facing. Those are some of the biggest lessons that I think I've learned. So instead of giving up, I want to look at what things I can do better on. I want to gather feedback from other people and I want to use whatever knowledge I receive to create something greater because failure is just another step towards the success that we seek. 
Now, I want you to take a moment and I want you to reflect. And because that's what I'm doing in this episode. You know, what challenges are you facing right now? How can you reframe your mindset to see these challenges as opportunities for growth? And don't get me wrong. I know that shit is hard. I know it's hard. But remember, resilience is a skill you can develop. It doesn't mean you just come with resilience. We're not all just born with resilience and confidence and motivation, right? It's a skill you actually can develop. It's about staying flexible, um, adaptable, and committed to your vision, no matter what. And that's the key, no matter what, because we know we're going to face hardship. We know we're going to face some things that are not going to go right in our lives. We know we're going to face some things that are going to be hard. And that's where we have to build that resilience. That's how the resilience goes. We have to build that resilience to say, you know what? I can do this. I can get through this. But doing these two months that I've been dealing with this stuff, and I don't even know if it's been a two months, to be honest with you guys. I feel like it's probably been like, like a six months that I've been dealing with this stuff, carrying this heaviness emotionally, mentally, feeling like I've been in this dark place, feeling like I can't see the growth. I can't see the opportunities. I can't see where I'm going. And, but I want to, and I want to make sure that I stay committed to my goals and I be truth to myself, right? I want to be true to myself because I feel like I said, I'm walking around here. I'm telling everyone I'm okay. I'm okay. And I'm not. And when I told my friend that I wasn't, And I told another friend that too, when she called and asked me like, how are you good? And I say, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not good. And it's okay to say it. And a lot of times, like I said, I never admitted it because I didn't want people to judge me. I don't want people to think that I'm, you know, I don't even know people think I'm perfect because I know I don't. I don't, I can't really say that other people think I am. (laughs) Um, But we all go through our hardships and this journey of entrepreneurship and this, let's just say this journey of life is hard. Deciding like, should I stay on this path to entrepreneurship? Should I go back and get the job? Because, hey, the job is secure because that's what the mind tells us. The job is secure. But then I think to myself, well, how is my job secure when I got laid off last year, August? How can it really be secure? Is it really that secure? Because it's not. But the mental state is that you've been doing this for so long. It's what's been keeping you going. It's what's been paying the bills. And now you took this unintentional leap into entrepreneurship and now things are not going where you're supposed to. Everything that could go wrong is possibly happening. So it's like, what do you do now? Where your bills are stacking up. You have to take care of your family. You have bills to take care of. You have to take care of yourself. So you need to go get that job, Shawnee. And then I took the steps to do that. I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. I took the steps to do that. And I'm like, I'm not even getting any calls back. I'm not even getting any hits on my resume. And so now I'm dealing with that the rejection. (laughs) It's been a heavy time. I tell you guys, it's been a heavy time because it's been a real heavy time. It's been a real heavy time. And so that's what I wanted to have this conversation today because it's that resilience that we need to build up to stay and stand motivated on this journey because they're going to come tough times in our life. They're going to come times where we have to pause and pull back, right? Me, this past two months was a pause for me because I I didn't release any episodes. I didn't do anything on social. Everything was just so all consuming what I had to deal with with my family and everything I was dealing with personally. Um, it was just all consuming. I could, I didn't even have the, the energy or the strength to do nothing else. And mind you, I have episodes ready to go. I have episodes out already recorded. I could have been doing something, but I didn't have the strength to do it. And so what do you do when you hit that road? You were already struggling a little before all this happened, right? Before that two month pause happened, because financially you're just saying to yourself, what is going on? Where is the money coming from? How am I going to get it? Why things are not coming in like it's supposed to? I see all these other people doing great. I see all these other people making great money and being able to support their lifestyle and their families. But why am I not? And then we begin to compare ourselves to other people. We begin to look at other people and say, well, why am I not doing that? Why is that not happening for me? I see them doing it so I know it's possible. And that's the thing about me. I see what other people do 
And when I see what other people do, it just really motivates me because it's the possibility that it's possible. It's possible. It's not something that's not possible. It's not something that's impossible. It's not something that has never been done before. People are out here doing it and people are out here doing it very well. But the questioning that comes about is that why are you not doing it? Why is it not happening for you? Why can't you get it together to do it? That's where the questioning has come for me. And that's what I mean by I was questioning everything. My decisions, my actions, my motivation. Like, should I still be doing this? But when I think about the opposite, when I think about on the other end, I'm going to get the job. It just brings me misery. When I think about, I love doing this podcast. I love doing what I'm doing. The content creation. I love creating. I love being able to listen to other people's stories and being able to be a storyteller myself. So why would I give that up? Why would I really give that up? I'm like, I don't want to give that up. I want to keep going with that. I want to keep it going and continue to move forward with that because that's what it takes. That's the resilience. That's the motivation. That's the motivation right there. It's because you love it. It's because you can't see yourself doing anything else. I've never been the person that saw myself working for someone my whole entire life and retiring. I always knew that entrepreneurship was my journey. Entrepreneurship was my goal. So as I, I'm going to wrap up this episode because it's not a long one. But as I wrap up this episode, I want us to be able to continue to build our resilience and understand that it is a process, that it can be built. I want us to find ways to be motivated. You know, what actionable steps can we take to help cultivate our resilience and stay motivated? And so one of the things that I continue to do that I'm back to doing is start journaling your thoughts and challenges. Write them down. Write down your thoughts, your feelings, and the obstacles that you're facing. And I feel like the reason why you should write them down is because this can really help you gain clarity and perspective. It really can. When you're able to write something down in pen and paper, you're able to see what you're facing and you might actually be able to come up with something, an opportunity that can turn that into something greater. And then we have to practice our daily affirmations. And I know what you're probably saying, affirmations, yes, but understand affirmations and um, meditation and um, it works. Affirmations can really rewire your brain to think more positively, being able to manifest things. Being able to do that is a powerful tool because it changes your mindset. Remember, this is all about your mindset. And if we can start each day with an affirmation that reinforces your resilience and our determination, just imagine where we can be within just a week or two. If we can get up and speak these affirmations that can really build our resilience and determination. And then I want us to set those small achievable goals for ourselves. We have our big goals that we have in our life and our big goals can seem so um, unreachable sometimes. But when we break our big goals down into smaller steps and celebrate each achievement, no matter how small it is, it could just be I actually created a checklist of my goals. I broke my big goals down into smaller goals. That's an achievement. That's work towards what you're trying to do. And then I want us to remember, and I have to remember this for myself too, is to engage more in regular self-care. I have to find activities that really help me relax and recharge. And you need to do the same. Make them a regular part of our routine. Let's not look at them as chores, right? Because exercising does relax me. And I don't want to look at it as a chore. I want to look at it as a way that I recharge, a way that I reconnect with myself. And that's what really self-care is. Being able to reconnect with yourself, to understand you being able to work on your mental health. And then we need to connect with others, a supportive community, like join groups on Facebook and forums or network wherever you can to share your experiences and and to share your challenges so you can gain support from those like-minded individuals that can really help keep you motivated on this journey. I really think that's where we need to go with this because that's what helps us build that resilience. That's what helps us keep us motivated. A lot of time we suffer in silence. A lot of time we're suffering through things alone. We don't want to share. Like I said, I didn't want to share because I didn't want people to know what was going on. 
but now I feel like I'm in a place where I want, I want people to know, I want to share, I want to keep going forward with this. I'm not going to be the person that lies anymore and says, Hey, yeah, I'm great when I'm not great. I'm going to let people know when I'm not great because it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to not be okay all the time. So that's how I feel. But I want to thank you guys for joining me today on this journey. And it has been great to talk to you guys. Great to be back behind the microphone. And I thank you guys for joining me. And I hope that my stories and my, and some of the strategies, I hope they can inspire you and motivate you to stay on your path and build resilience on your entrepreneur journey. Because what we have to remember is that every setback is a setup for a comeback. So we need to keep pushing forward and you'll find you will achieve great things in your life. Get If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the podcast. Leave us a review. We love to hear from you. We love reviews on Apple or Spotify. And your feedback really does help us create more content to support your journey. And it actually inspires me. So don't forget to share this episode with others who might benefit from it, who might be going through their own struggles in life, who might be dealing with some things. So please do make sure you share this episode with them and join the conversation on social media using, of course, the hashtag girl take note. And I love to hear from you guys. I love to hear about your mindset challenges and just how you overcome opportunities and victories. So I want to make sure you guys do that. So listen, guys, stay tuned for our next episode where I sit down with Stephanie Gonzalez and we talk about all how to change your relationship with the money so you can build a successful business. And I'll see you guys next time.